All right, everybody. Tony here again. Uh, it's actually the day after the Oxbow camp or kayak trip, and also the quarry tour. So trying to make it, a, <coughs> excuse me, a trifecta. My son Austin and I, we are going to go camping. We're just going to do an overnighter, and we've got some family slash friends that have property in and around the Apple Valley Danville area so that being said is they've kind of given us a, an open invite respectfully where I always call them and see if it's okay if we come up and stay on the ridge but some really cool um, it's kind of a neat open place just right alongside some woods um, on some rolling hills and they've got some bean fields out there but it's kind of a uh, primitive out in the middle of nowhere no electricity no water so we have to plan for that and uh, Austin and I like to go out and we've gone out a few times this year and we will build a fire and chill out uh, have some good food um, Austin has to be bribed with food so we go out and I usually try to make some good things uh, last time we had filet mignon and potatoes and whatnot and so this time um, we're gonna do pork chops but I'm going to go buy a fire ring now as uh, our gracious hosts have used theirs um, somewhere else on the property so I said I'd bring one so I'm gonna go look for a fire ring go procure some food and uh, then go pack up and get ready to hit the trail so it's gonna be a uh, car slash truck camping I got here in the Chevy truck and looking forward to a good time with my son. So if anything, trying to build some memories here and get him away from what my friend calls no friendo. Um, the like Nintendo, but he plays Xbox. So anyway, getting him out in the sunshine and showing him how to basically do some man skills. So that's what we're doing today. Looks like a deal. Not bushcraft, but you know. Let's see here. What are one of these guys? Just a couple little kickstarters to make it easy. I'm gonna try one of those guys at some time too, but not today. Okay, I've got the uh, fire ring procured. Um, so that way I've got my own. I mean, it was 39 bucks just to have it, so I figured why not. Also grabbed a couple bundles of different types of wood. Uh, I know it's not bushcrafting, it's kind of the wolf's way out. Uh, but also we've had a heck of a lot of rain, so um, not sure what I could find there. But again, it's on private property, so um, I'm kind of careful as far as uh, the wood that I grab while I'm out there. Um, but also yesterday, because of the storms, uh, there was a huge branch down from a tree I have in my yard and I found out there are a couple other um, dead limbs and took them down because I didn't want any of the neighbor kids to get hurt because uh, one of the branches actually fell right across the uh, neighbor's driveway. So anyway, uh, cut some of that up, got a uh, like a big bucket full of little sticks and tinder and things. So because of the rain, again, I won't have to worry about that. Throw it in the back of the truck and that way I don't have to spend a lot of my time hunting gathering for wood um, when I could be spending it with my son so anyway now on to Kroger to get us some food and uh, we'll pack and hit the trail okay everybody I've got about everything put together here one of the things that I think is crucial to um, eating well out on the trail outdoors or just anywhere in particular is uh, the preparation and the planning tonight Austin and I are gonna have one meal he decided he wanted pork chops so um, so I went ahead and got some of the things put together, uh, some of the side dishes and what have you. So from here, I'm just going to kind of show you what I put together so that way it travels well, is easy to prepare, and I don't spend a whole lot of my, uh, my camping time and guest work. So from here, I'll just go ahead and show you real quick what I got for this evening um, and some of the things that I do to prepare it. I do a lot of par cooking so that way once I get there, it is uh, relatively easy for me to set up a good meal and eat real well out in the woods. Okay, just got the things laid out here just so that way I can kind of show you 
um, you know, what we're going to go through to get ready for the camping trip. I've got some water boiling right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and park hook some potatoes in this as well as some corn so that way I don't have to spend a lot of time uh, dealing with that over an open fire later. So uh, for beverages, these things, these Via Instants are great uh, to make a good cup of coffee. Uh, I usually use my camp stove for that, but I've also used it over a fire. Uh, they come in these little packets. Uh, between you and I, this is a strong roast, this uh, French roast here. Um, I saw a review on where people compared this to many other different kinds of uh, coffees from the Folgers and what have you. Uh, if I'm out, one of the pleasures I love about uh, being outdoors is a good cup of coffee, especially sitting around by the fire, uh, kind of in those uh, morning moments and just listening to the birds. This is a good one. I highly recommend uh, the Starbucks. You just add them to your uh, cup of hot water. Um, between you and I is I like two of them uh, because I like a bigger cup of coffee rather than having to get a couple of the small ones. Uh, this is a coffee mate. I like the French vanilla just a little bit in the morning, not too much, but the to-go doesn't require refrigeration. Um, it actually comes out, uh, you know, nice and creamy. So uh, it's actually kind of good. And um, also Austin likes it too, and I let him drink coffee when we're out. So anyway, I digress. Um, also too is rather than getting the crystal light, I found for the lemonade, uh, my local store brand, which is Kroger, is just as good. Uh, as the crystal light and it's about like a, a buck 20 for a box of what is it 10 of them so um, this is something I recommend just uh, we usually take a lot of water but for dinner and so forth just to jazz it up a little bit and um, you know so get your flavor of choice for the menu tonight as I mentioned one thing that um, before I get into this I love cast iron skillets I've got a flat one I've also got a smaller one with higher sides I'm going to take this tonight because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do to prep the food. So um, I'll explain this in just a moment, but uh, just a well-seasoned, good old-fashioned cast iron skillet. Um, especially, I like the larger, you can kind of see with my hand here. I don't know what's that about, you know, 10 inches, 12 inches across. But uh, I love this guy and it goes with me on many uh, truck camping trips. So anyway, pork chops. The first thing I'm going to do on these is these are, you know, about an inch thick here, not too thick. The one thing I found sometimes with campfire cooking, because flame can be inconsistent even if you get the coals just right, is uh, sometimes if I get something that's real thick, I'll butterfly it down just to make it a little bit easier. Not how I would prepare it at home or on my own grill, but when I'm eating out, I still want the meat to be, you know, done well. But if you blow it out on the, you know, the trail or at the campsite, uh, you're going to go hungry. What I like to do uh, with these is I'm going to have a marinade of apple juice. I put a little bit of, I don't have any fresh garlic, forgot it at the store. Um, this is just a little bit of a minced garlic, if you can kind of see in there. Just about a, you know, half tablespoon of that. And then I put some sliced onions. I let those be the marinade. So it gives it kind of a sweet, a little bit of a, you know, kind of an earthy hot flavor to it. And then what I'll do is I'll blot it off after I pull them out of the bag. Then I'm going to keep them in here for transport. And then I like uh, just a little bit of a, a seasoning. The Montreal Steak by McCormick, I don't know if you can kind of see it there. It's actually really good. It's got a lot of different uh, herbs and spices and all that fun stuff in it. Um, but it really does just, uh, you know, kind of prep the meat well for cooking. Great on steak, burgers, and also pork chops. Because pork chops can be, uh, you know, a little bland unless you prepare them correctly. So I'll show you that in a moment. I'm going to par cook uh, some sliced potatoes. Uh, because what I like to do is I'll wrap them in the foil, which you'll see in a moment, a little bit of salt and pepper and some shallot. I'll show you how I kind of prep the pack to cook, so that way that's easy. Uh, picked up a tomato at a farm market uh, the day before yesterday. It's at like peak brightness. I like them. Austin does not, so I'll slice that up on the side for a little acid balance between you know your your meat, your starch, and then also I'm going to par cook both of these guys too. Typically, um, you can just throw this right on the fire as is. Um, but it does give a little bit of a different texture. These guys, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, are uh, they look really white corn, really flavorful, I'm hoping. So I'll show you that in just a moment, what I do for those. Uh, catch it, because of taters. My son likes it, as well as I do too. Uh, Heinz 57, I like it on pork chops. And then what I like to get, which I use year round for my kids' school lunches, are these little cups with these little lids that you can keep sauces in. Uh, just as I've done here for a little jelly, if my son wants some, for skillet biscuits. So these things, uh, 
which I, I love to pick up just to take. A lot of times I use them for the morning, but for tonight, I cook them right on here. When you cook these, which uh, I'll hopefully get a chance to show you, is you cook them on one side for a moment. As soon as they start to brown, cook them on the other. Well, the inside's still gonna be rather gooey because it's underbaked. That's why I split them in half, kind of butterfly them, cook them the rest of the way through. And honestly, I would do this every day. And again, over an open fire, they're awesome. But we're gonna have them for dinner tonight. And finally, an experiment. Uh, just like I said with the skillet biscuits, I'm going to try with these uh, chocolate chip cookies to be able to take them, kind of mashing them out kind of thin. I'm gonna to try to cook them on here the same way I do with skillet biscuits, kind of uh, just a little bit of an experimentation. People like cookie dough, worst case scenario, we're having cookie dough as a snack, but uh, I'm gonna see how well these things will kind of bake up utilizing this guy and um, easy to transport. So let me begin. Shuck some corn. All right. That's a pretty good looking bit of white corn there. There was a corn where I grew up called Silver Queen, and that's about the closest I've seen. And yes, this is just store bought. So I forgot to pick it up at the farm market the other day. So I'm going to get these guys in the water here just, just for a few moments, and we'll see how it goes from there. Now, one of the things I'm doing is trying to cut these, you know, rather thin. For one is I want them to kind of fry up and brown up if I can get them that way on the, the fire and by the way I lay them out. Um, but also too, they'll par cook a lot quicker. So, oh, looks like I might have a bad guy here. Uh, there we go, okay. Don't need a lot, there's only two of us. Yep. And this little guy slick, so I watch my fingers so I don't have to go to the emergency room before we go. There we go. Mandolin's actually great for that. Shall it? Come here, guy. Get some of the extra skin off. Come here. Oh, well. Yeah, from here. And these don't have to be perfect because it doesn't look like they're going to be. Okay, so from here, the ingredients, a little salt, pepper, we've got shallots, and we're going to do butter slices, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Now what I'm going to do, pull these little guys out, they've been in just for about five minutes. It's plenty. And I'm going to use this water here. So I'm going to let these sit over here in the sink. Drop in potato slices. Let these guys stand for about five or six minutes. Hot, lid, and we'll be back to these guys here in just a second. Okay, in the meantime, I'm just going to slice up a little bit of this onion. On there. Come on, guys. Fuck above out each time. Come on. 
Good. Now, don't need much because again, there's only two of us. So there may be one, maybe two slices. And oh, that's good. Now, what I'm gonna do from here is throw those guys in there. So, not many. Just, again, a little bit of this garlic here. I don't know how much, just about enough that's on the tip of that knife. Don't want it real garlicky. Put that in the bag. Apple juice, brand yeah, doesn't matter. It's just a marinade. Yeah. And that was, I don't know, 10 fluid ounces. Don't need a lot. Massage it. Yeah. And from here, a little salt, a little pepper. Forgot one thing. I like a little splash of Worcestershire in this too. So just wink. Just has a little something. I don't know what. And take these two little guys here. And one thing beforehand is kind of stipple it a little bit. The fork. Okay, a little on the other side. All right, kind of stipply. And you go, and in you go. Trying to get. Surround it as much as possible. Try to get the excess air out. And there you have it. A little bit of a package. This is a great way to marinate them by the time we get up there too. This will really have tenderized them. It gives them a lot of flavor. The sweet with a little bit of the aromatics in there. Um, it's awesome. So I'm going to put it back in the handsome carrying case it came in. So this guy's ready. It's good to go. Good for transport. And before I go, I'll probably drain off just a little bit of the liquid here, but um, this guy's ready for the cool look. Okay, from here in this baggie, I just put a couple little toothpicks in just in case uh, your teeth get a little porky. But on top of that, because again, it won't matter, but I try to conserve, is there's my rub. That's going to be more than plenty. It will not make the toothpicks funky, done it before. But uh, that way I'll know where they are because I gotta get them out and set them aside. But um, here it is the rub for later. Okay, now my corn is done. I, again, I just put it in for about five minutes. So this stuff's gonna be awesome. What I need to do here is to get it so I can warm it up later and cook it on the fire. What I'm going to do first, just to protect it, just a little cooking spray. Not much, just a little bit. From here, I take some whoop, pats of butter. Very good, good. Let's get close to the middle. One little guy, two little guy. And let's do this first. I usually put a little salt around it and on top. One of the reasons I forgot to mention is that I put the cooking spray on is I found that it made uh, the salt kind of stick and more uniformly as it does kind of season this. So and if you can see, they're going to want to kind of be all over the place because the stuff's still warm. But 
and again, yes, this is more than enough butter, but most of it will be kind of all over the place. So a little directly on the corn, a little cracked pepper because, and again, par cook for five minutes. Roll this little guy down to a little corn burrito. Twist, wrap up, twist, wrap up, and this little guy's ready for the cooler. Butter fingers. guys on top because these will be turning in the fire there we go. and just a little bit on the top a little bit on top top of the package that's what she said top of the package and again Ready for the corn. Another ear of corn. Okay, time to get this together. First thing I've done is I've taken this piece of foil, given a little light coating of uh, cooking spray. Again, just to kind of protect it as well as I want my potatoes to kind of, uh, you know, grill up, fry up a little bit. I'm using some butter again, too. Um, this is not a low class crawl shot today. So, give me a couple more little pats. And you do it on the bottom because also too is it's going to be what kind of helps cook the taters. Let's move these guys out a little bit here. And there we go. You can kind of see, got it spread around a little bit. Now I'm going to give a little layer of the shallots, spice shallots, close to the bottom because I want them to really kind of grill up. Nice and yummy. And a little bit of garlic salt. Nothing too much. And just for a little kick, um, using a little bit of uh, cayenne. And then a layer of the potatoes. Kind of break them up a little bit so they're more like home fries. You can kind of see here. And it'll already start to melt the butter. Very well then, very well. Just a little bit more butter in between because I'm going to be turning this in the fire. Yes, you can substitute the butter, margarine, whatever you want. But again, today for the sake of campfire cooking, this is what we're doing. And a couple more little shallots. More of the taters. Let's see. Plenty for two people. Here. Waste not more milk. And then the onion. Okay. Yeah, so if you can see here, and just for the top, one final little smattering little pieces of butter. And also, a little cooking spray. And finally, another little dusting of the cayenne, garlic salt. Okay, hold up. And try to mash this out as well as I can. And 
probably don't need that little hole oh, there, do they? Nope. I'm gonna get another sheet of foil. So this foil, as you can see, is kind of thin. So I'm gonna double it up. Nice little package of taters. These are going to be good. Okay, I've gotten everything done now. It's all prepped and ready to go into the cooler. Um, if you can kind of see, right now, um, got the cookies, the can. Um, tell you what, let me flip this around so that way you can kind of see it a little bit better. Much better. Um, got the coffee, the creamer, so that way that's going to basically be breakfast because we're going to stop at a little diner that I found the other day. Austin wants to do breakfast there. A lot of times I'll have a larger prep area here. These are the marinating pork chops. I've got some of the steak sauce that I wanted. This is the uh, seasoning so right before I cook, as well as a couple toothpicks. Two packages of the corn. I've got some extra butter if we'll need it, but those things are saturated. Should be good. Um, when I make the skillet biscuits, a little bit of jelly, because Austin likes jelly. Uh, I've also got uh, something for the beverage if you don't want to just drink water. Got myself a tomato. And this is the packet of uh, potatoes and onions with two extra things to catch it. So right here, this is going to be just a meal for tonight because, again, we are truck camping. We're not hiking. Uh, this isn't mountain air or alpine air or mountain house or what have you. Um, we go out to eat well, and as long as I prep, it's usually pretty much a no-hassle deal. So I like to show that sometimes, too, you can have a little bit more, um, a little more glamour to your cuisine when you're out eating, especially if you are truck camping. If I were to make it for a bigger group, again, sometimes it changes the strategy, but for Two of us, we can eat well and just as well as we do at home. So now I'm going to put this stuff in that cooler and off we go. Okay, I believe I've got everything packed now. Uh, I always bring a water bladder. This is just some tap water here. Not so much for drinking, although I could, but for washing my hands, uh, dishes and whatnot. Um, but I always like to have that guy on hand. Uh, it really comes in use. Um, like I said, I've got a little extra wood here, and this is from the trees and whatnot I did from the tree branch yesterday. Put together the fire ring. That was a five minute task at best, just like a, what? eight screws and done. Um, made a little slingshot target uh, for my son, something to shoot at. Back there is the gear I usually keep in my truck. That trunk has uh, basically a battery jump unit. Uh, it's got a small emergency snow shovel, a camp chair, some tarps, uh, just some random whatnot as well as I've got some battery cables there. The tents are back there. I've got my foreman that Austin and I use. Then I've got a one man there and just a gas tank. So, anyway, the rest of the gear is in the back. Um, Come on, show in there. A little comforts from home for Austin, our sleeping bags. And I hope uh, that I've got everything because of uh, the traffic. That is probably the fastest I've ever packed. So, anyway, the planes overhead are getting annoying. So, I'm going to sign off here and we got to get on the road. Okay, we're going to stop here. I am. We are on our way. There's my son Austin over there doing what he does best. Checked out. Um, but at least, uh, ooh, look over there, Austin. It's green stuff. It's called trees. But uh, anyway, uh, Austin and I seem to like this place. Uh, we've gone a few times, as I said before. Um, we've just got to get out of Columbus. It's about an hour and 15 minutes north of Columbus uh, in normal traffic. So. Um, I might try to find a creative way to get there, so it might take me a little while longer as I'm trying to avoid some um, construction on 315. But uh, we're on our way to what's, I guess, outside of Apple Valley to Danville. Uh, it is now 81 degrees, 
5.04 p.m. on this Tuesday afternoon in late July. And um, so from here it's onward and upward. Right, Austin? Yep. I thought he was flipping me off. Alright, we're finally north of the city. Uh, it took a while and it's it's pretty nasty at that after five o'clock. Um, one thing is uh, just speaking with my son too as he was sharing some of his insight on YouTube and as I did this is uh, just like I wrote a book a handful of years ago. Uh, it's called Artisan of the Human Spirit, just kind of a little insightful personal experience thing for me. Again, it was mainly my experiences and I wrote it for me. Uh, and the whole thing of I always said that I'd like to write a book, but it's never going to do it. I was too old, it's too dumb, it's too this, too that. And I just decided to do it and um, published it. And so just like this, is this is not the intent of um, making you know, billion dollars or getting subscribers or that sort of a thing. But uh, just even in speaking with Austin right here is, I mean, uh, you know, he's an avid YouTube video watcher and uh, just sharing it, you know, just some of the insights and different ways to produce. So uh, may have to make this guy right here, you know, production manager. So. What? So, but it was also funny too, as he was, uh, you know, just kind of uh, making fun of me doing this a little bit. But, you know, at this point I, I really, um, don't care for the fact that uh, just like when writing the book is sometimes you got something to say or something you want to get down but I think is a uh, part of it too is just a way to immortalize yourself because especially if it ever does go up on the internet uh, that it does kind of immortalize you in a way that like I said is that you know I'm not gonna live forever and uh, hopefully not going anywhere soon but that uh, you know we're making memories here as my stepfather when we were growing up uh, we went camping an awful lot and even with my father we've been blessed to be able to travel the world so now with my son that I'm hoping we can do some stuff that he'll have good memories of and pass on to his children so um, you know, that's more or less why I do it but also the other thing is with him doing the, the, the vlogs on this is to show that you can go out and have a good time you don't have to go far don't have to spend a lot of money don't have to spend a lot of time is uh, just like when I went to the uh, Hoover Reservoir with my friend, you know, I had like a four hour window and, you know, it was, you know, a special day. So for us, we'd drive an hour out of town, got some, uh, you know, got some people who let us use their land. We go up and have a good meal, good time. We chat on the way up, good conversation there, son. Um, but, uh, you know, again, make some special moments and then we can be home the next day. So, um, Anyway, that's why we do what we do. Uh, these are more, another version of road thoughts. Okay, we're making decent time now. Um, just moving up the road here. It took us a little while to get out of town. Um, my son doesn't know, but I'm gonna, brought him out here to talk about puberty and what the Bible says about touching yourself. So, okay, just seeing if he was paying attention. But anyway, um, guess who? this guy uh, forgot our plates to uh, I've got some kind of nice camping plates uh, and especially since we bring a little abundance of food I'm not gonna bushcraft a log into a plate that's not what this is about so I'm hoping to find a dollar store up here um, and maybe pull over and see if I can get something uh, for us to eat on but uh, other than that we're about to hit uh, God's country there's a little town Fredericksburg Frederick Burke Town. Frederick. Fred something. But anyway, um, I haven't seen anything there before. So anyway, I'm going to try to find that. Um, and again, road tripping. Those are more road thoughts. Son, your hair's on fire. Oh, you finally look. Your mother and I are getting a divorce. I don't care. 
Alright, finally hears me. I'm an angsty teenager and I hate my dad. There we go. And there we go. Maybe the dinner savior. Okay, I think Dollar General said today. Um, plates. Got some to eat on. Also, something else I forgot. Uh, tongs and a cheap spatula. Yeah, these guys here. Because again, I'm not into bushcrafting this tonight, so that way something we can get uh, our food out of the fire. Um, got paper towels and donuts. Hostess chocolate donuts. Well, I got your attention. Yoink. And back on the road again. As soon as you see chocolate, what? I, know, I thought I heard your vertebrae snap like, <laughs> chocolate. chocolate. I need chocolate. Okay, onward and upward. It's a nice scenic drive, but I must admit that I just passed by one of the most killer mullets I've ever seen. Silver hair, like a number three guard on top, bald patch, perfect Alabama waterfall right down to his collar. Awesome. Made it worth the trip. to have a uh, four by four to get here to our right is uh, some woods that are private property we may get a chance to zip back in them later and to our left is a farmer's bean field so it's been recently mowed as you can kind of see here but still a little bumpage and just right around the bend here is slice of paradise here just up on a ridge nobody to bother us and you can kind of see the uh, kind of pretty scenery here so here's our campsite and as usual we're gonna pull over yeah this will be it for the night nice and quiet And see so down there is our little fire spot. And the woods. So I'm going to get stuff out of here, all around here, and um, get camp set up, get a fire going. Enjoy.
go. Ammo. Maybe. Trouble. Can you try one? Can you try one? Can I try that multiple? What's that? Can I do multiple? Let me try one at first. Get one. Okay. And do what? Let me get you some goggles and there you go. Now let's go see if you can see if it went through because remember last time couldn't tell. Yeah, it went yeah. through. I can see it. Yeah, right there. All right. So onward and upward. If you can mess with that for a moment, I'll start getting the tent and stuff ready. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set up my tent. I've got the Cabela's Westwind 4. It says four person. It's a dome tent. It's got a nice little vestibule. But to be honest, Austin and I together are comfortable by ourselves. Couldn't imagine adding two more people. And this is who knows what brand, but it is a footprint that I got off of Amazon. First time using it, so we'll see. Because I used to use one of those uh, tarps that you would get from like Lowe's and whatnot, and they were kind of cumbersome. So, all right. So inflatable. Another auto inflatable. I'm going to give this guy a hand. It's like a piece of poop. Good pillow, nonetheless. One of my favorite things is my whoopee. It's a poncho liner, military poncho liner, but uh, this thing will keep you warm. And sleeping bag, sleeping bag, and Austin, you have a wool blanket somewhere that you gotta go find. Go find it. Okay, and here we have our tent for the evening. Our sleeping arrangements. There's where Austin's gonna be, brought his own pillow. I got a couple of the field and stream little portable guys. My sleeping bag goes down to, I believe, maybe 20 degrees, I'm not sure. Uh, but I also put the woobie on top. I'd rather kick something off than freeze. Um, the mattress I've got under here, inflatable, had to do it by mouth. Austin's, on the other hand, Coulson, got it off of uh, Amazon. Actually, it's really cool. It's got a built-in pillow, but this sleeping bag is, uh, I think, to 40 degrees, so I put a wool blanket on. It's only supposed to get down to like 60 tonight, but anyway, this is it. Got some little 
gear places in here, but I'll probably just for safety's sake may put on the rain fly. I'm not sure yet, but this is where we're at for now. 